Hello, welcome, I'm Ellie. Today I'm going to show you lots and lots of different ways that you can build a couch from the same base. So using just the same basic pieces, but then if you use other pieces you have in your collection to make it a variation, does that make any sense? <laughs> Wow, I've started this so well. So, couches, right? So, they have got these roundy bits along the top and the sides, and you've got all sorts of different types of roundy bits in Lego form. Lots and lots and lots and lots of different ones. So, using these, you can have lots of different variants of couches. Well, of couch styles will make it actually, using different ones makes them look really different. And the other fundaments of a couch basically is this bit, which is the cushions, which is we can use as flat, and the base, and of course the legs, and you can vary up the legs. But we are going to use the same base and seating, is that what you call it? <laughs> for, for all of these couches. So what you basically need to start with for every single one of these couches is this, either a 2x6 with a 1x6 plate, which together makes three, uh, like a 3x6 plate area. Or you can use these two square pieces, which are 3x3, three three, which adds up to the same. And you use a 2x4 tile to hold them together. So it doesn't matter what configuration you have on the bottom, as long as the tile can hold them together. And then you've got the area around the outside to make the cushioning and the backrest. So I call this one couch, multiple variants, like Loki, or my favourite, if you're musically inclined, couch theme and variations. So let's do this. So starting off with a 2x4 tile, in this case it's pink and I've put a sticker on it just to give it some sort of interesting furniture patterning, like cushioning patterning. And if you want to do this you can use anything. I use washi tape for a lot of these things because it's exactly the right width for, for a tile, for a 2x4 tile. So look at that and it, and it peels off really cleanly as well when you decide you don't want that patterning anymore you can swap it over. Really, really handy. I have such a collection of washi tape now. Uh, okay, so 2x4 tile and this configuration again we got our 3x6 all up plate area and now we just have to put our, our rounded bits on. So we can use this nice rounded bit for the back, it's quite tall and then we could use these angled slope ones for the side and if we decide that's what we like, yeah that's nice, it's nice and basic and simple you can backfill the spaces that are left and then smooth over the top maybe with these nice smooth two by one tiles and that actually makes a nice even all the way around which I like but I also want to try adding just one plate for height for the backrest and look look just adding one different brick made it look so much different uh, more different, <laughs> different, uh, more different and nice and easy way to add feet is of course just putting studs in and you always have a surplus of studs because they're extras in all the sets. So look that's already so different to the one that I already built but it's still made out of the same base idea. Next one using these rounded pieces as the back and as they're red and I want the front of it to look red too I can use the one by six piece that goes on the front as red as well, the one by six plate and holding it together with a black 2x4 tile to pattern very nicely to tie in with the red back and on this we can use the same angle pieces slopes and just put them backwards. I mean that makes it look different and then because I can't stand having these exposed studs we're just going to put some translucency bits on the top and that looks kind of thrown like which is good because it was red very majestic and for feet something a little bit different to the other ones so far just little round black plates which just it, it just makes it look different and I should have a bit of a balancing bit on the back there but I'm too lazy so it'll be fine once you seat that down on flooring it'll be fine next variant this one is going to be in this reddish brown color once again we've got the same configuration for the base of it and for the back a four by one brick and these pieces here which I don't know what you call them but they've got an angly slope on the outside once you decide where you want them then you can backfill the spaces and then we can just smooth the rest of this over and then we got a nice nice back on the couch and yeah maybe flat armrests for this one so we'll just build them up a little bit with two by one plates and then put the two by one tiles on the top and ta-da uh, once again we'll just go with studs for the actual feet because I forgot to think of something more interesting for this but look at that a nice simple everyday couch next green time <laughs> here we are we're going to put on a really nice vibrant tropical color for our tile here and we're using these same slopey pieces that we used in this ready brown one but we're going to make it just a bit different by leaving the space down the bottom with some negative space and it just makes it look really really different and because 
we just now have got the sides down flat. I'm going to put these two couches side by side because they're so similar. But just those little tiny variations make them look really different. Like different enough. It's, that excites me. Like, it just doesn't take very much. You can just use whatever pieces you have in your collection to make some form of couch if you've got that base. So this time I actually don't have the right sort of pieces here for, to make a dark purple base. So I've got three six by one plates and I'm holding them all together with some three by one plates which we're going to use as the feet. So now it's, I mean it's basically the same. Got our cushioning bit on and for the back, for the curve bits, going to build it up just a little bit first because these ones are going to go on the side and to add a bit of variation, a bit of texture and a little bit of see-throughness and negative space, the transparent purple studs look really nice on the back. And then we can put some more of these same slope pieces on the side and ta-da, yet another variation. Am I saying variation too much? Well, it is all about variation. Now, speaking of variations, we're gonna do variations on our stable pieces. So <laughs> this flat piece, which we have used in all the others, you can also use this slope piece and you can put stickers on these too. So I've got a couple of pieces that I already prepared before and they're the same size, once again, of the piece we used before of the flat tile bit but because it angles backwards it means mini dolls can sit in there a little bit more securely without falling out so now we got these two nice slope pieces sloping in towards each other and now we just got to decide what we're going to put on the side uh, and maybe if we use these same I'm calling them all slope pieces because I don't know what they're called if we use these on the side we don't even need to fill in the spaces underneath it just looks like a really nice armchair arm and flat along the side and for feet I love these rounded plate pieces so these are gonna be our feet for this and once again we got that just that little bit on the back it's gonna tip back but you know what I'm not paying any attention yet so next one this time we're gonna do the same sort of thing as the previous one so using these pieces pink pieces which are essentially just the same as the cushioning the front cushioning but they just need an extra bit of build up so making our same base but this bit's going to go on the top and then we put the pink bits on and then we need to just build it up a little bit so that the back sloped bit <laughs> everything's bits of the back slope bit the back sloped cushion rest goes on nicely a little bit higher and the Oh, I don't know what these are called. Rounded cushion pe arm pieces. Make really nice rounded cushion arm pieces. And look, similar, similar, but really different. Okay, I'm having lots and lots of fun here. When are we going to stop? I don't know. When I run out of curved roundy pieces. These came in the new air dots, the photo frame, the frames. And I just knew immediately that they were going to be really, really good pieces <laughs> for uh, for couches. So if we put them on here, it could be like a really low kind of settee idea, but I want to build them up just one more plate. I mean, this is just a matter of opinion. You can put them flat down on your base area if you want to. I just want to take them up one more, I think. Yeah, I think so. And because we don't have any matching colors yet, or I don't have any matching colors to that blue, we're just having a variation of blue, all the variations, and then more blues for defeats, and yeah, another one on the back just to stabilize it. See, now that's kind of a very oriental, oriental style settee. Okay, number nine, we got lots and lots of these orange curved armresty bits, and once again, I need to use these three by three one by six plates and we're going to hold them together this time with the armrest pieces and I want to add a cushion. So adding a cushion to the back just needs one of these forward facing uh, stud bracket bits. So now we've got a cushion on one side and now we just need to add the backs and the sides. Look how much difference just putting a little cushiony bit in there makes. Just so much. Oh, <laughs> just filling in time while I put all these orange bits on. Look, a lovely armchair. And I mean, it's similar to this one, but it's, yeah, same, same, different. Duck, duck, goose. Right, let's do another goose. So using blue this time and putting out, we're back to the original <laughs> plan that I meant to stick to all the way through. And this is a relatively new slopey bit, this blue one. And we've got a bit of a space at the back. So we're going to just fill that in now with a one by six plate. And then we just need to decide what we want to have as the backrest. But I want to, oh, I want to put a cushion in again. So let's put a cushion in on the other side because we're going to add lots and lots of different textures to this one. So I, maybe I'll have a circular cushion. Um, that's kind of probably going to sit a bit high because I want to use that curved piece for the back. So it's going to sit above that. I'll have a look when it's all done. So if I put a green two by one rounded 
plate in the middle there. It just looks really nice texturally. Doesn't it look nice texturally? I'm really struggling to say that. Putting some gold stud pieces in as the feet because the top is busy enough. And look, same, different. Both have got a cushion, same of the same base design, but different. And this one is actually the couch out of the Madrigal house. And I loved this one. It's, it used, well, I'll, I'll show you if you haven't already seen that build or if you've forgotten this bit. I was just blown away by the simplicity of using a couple of different pieces for the arms. Look, so that holy piece there, which is normally one you put technique pins into, is on the side, makes a lovely panel. And along the back, there's so much shape and texture with the magenta pillows and the smooth wooden top. But you could change out what you want for those pillows there. So we could put these angled pieces in there and have a bit of negative space too, if you want. So that would make it different again. But I'll put it back to its original one because I do think that that is superior. All right, one more because otherwise we'll be here all day because I could do this all day. This one's going to be really quite different. But once again, same base, but using these scroll pieces, of course, because we're using the scroll pieces, I want to mix this up with some gold. So I'm going to use as many chrome gold pieces as I can find using the scroll for the back of the chair and these bracket pieces for the sides because then I can use those pink slopey cheese slope bits for the cushions on the side and gold tiles which double as arms and legs for this piece and because I don't have a six by one tile for along the top I've just got to use a four and a two which has a bit of a seam in it but you can see what the idea is so look so many different ways one couch Multi, multi variations. So you can have lots of fun just using whatever you have in your collection. Just put the main pieces together that you want to use. I mean, the base pieces and then the main slopey pieces, and then just backfill all the rest or leave them empty as negative space. But start with this. This is your base piece that is going to give you a nice foundation for all of the variations for couches that you want. So go make oodles and oodles of couches. Be free. But before you do that, make sure you subscribe and <laughs> tell me if you have a favorite couch out of the ones that I did today. And yeah, come back because there'll be more videos really soon. So I will see you then. Bye.